What's up guys, in today's video, what I wanna break down is more so how to dial in your unit economics if you're a D2C founder. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chris Hernandez. I'm the founder of scalevelocity.io and we help companies and D2C founders ultimately exit their company in two to three years with our robust protocol. But before I dive into specifics, why is it important for brands to ultimately dial in their unit economics? Well, unit economics is simply defined as the term in which we look at what your cost of goods is, what's the cost of a fill, and ultimately what's your net profit margin after you get a sale, especially for new customers when you're running ads across multiple access channels. Now, there's a lot of things you can move around and play with to increase your net profit margin, right? One is for the brand owner side is lowering your cost of goods or lowering the cost of a fill, which is either switching a new manufacturer or you shift locations in which you have a warehouse built and you uh, where that warehouse holds your product or your SKU. You could be pushing different SKUs at a higher net profit margin depending on whatever that unit economic metric is. Uh, you can increase your cost or you can lower your cost of fulfill by getting uh, customers to pay for shipping. Um, you can create an irresistible offer where it's like a higher AOV bundle package that increases your net profit margin. Like these are all the facets that you need to take into account to really like have a, a decent break even ROAS. The reason why it's super important to have a higher margin to be profitable on the front end of if you're running ads is because we have to take a step back and look at each advertising platform year over year. Every single platform year over year gets an, an absurd amount of increase in attention and people in the platform, depending on your marketing niche. And what happens is, well, that space gets saturated. Now, depending on what your product line is, if we look at the cosmetic space, well, then that space is super convoluted with a ton of beauty brands selling similar products in the makeup space. If I look at the fitness space, same thing here with a lot of similar people pushing supplements. Now, when it comes to dialing in unit economics, we pretty much break it down into these simple facets. Now, if I look at the cost breakdown in the profit analysis, we have like the product price, we have the average order value, we have whatever that price is after a discount, we have the units per order a typical buyer buys within a certain range of what we're trying to promote. We have our blended cost of goods, we have the cost of goods per order, we have our shipping cost per order, we have the average total cost to fulfill that average order. We have the percentage cost, we have the net profit after, and we have a break even ROAS, which is simply put your target CPA divided by the average order value. And this is how you get your break even ROAS. And then of course we measure that with the ad budget, whatever the offer is, and then what our target CPA has to be. Now to, to increase your margins, I really just touched on everything you need to do. It's either try, find a way to lower your cost of goods, find a way to lower your cost of fulfill, find a way to get more people to buy, or we can simply even raise the retail price to increase that net profit margin. Uh, you can run multiple offers that are bundle packages to increase the higher AOV so there's more net profit. These are the realms that you have to play in to lower your front end CAC, and especially after advertising platforms are getting more and more expensive. Now, I see a lot of DDC founders just be stagnant and not split tests over and over again, right? You need to constantly have this protocol in place and this procedure to constantly launch new offers, test new offers, increase your net profit margin year over year. Because what happens is I see too many brands solely rely on the fact that they're gonna lose money on the front end and then they may expect to make that money back just from the lifetime value of repeat buyers. So, and there's not even a, a really good metric to measure lifetime value. Nobody truly knows what their lifetime value is, to be honest, because the customer journey, each customer journey is not the same. So this quick video, I just want to break down facets of understanding the unit economics, what you can do to lower your unit economics, and ultimately how you can scale your business to possibly exit in the next two to three years. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions, drop them down below.